Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a close look at Brutog Corpse Eater from Cursed City. Here he is, Brutog Corpse Eater, one of the heroes from Cursed City, and I'm going to do a short video for each of the heroes and the main villains so we can take a close look at them, learn about their background, and then look at their abilities, their weapons, and things like that. And so I thought it'd be cool to start with this beast, Brutog the Corpse Eater. So here he is, pretty straightforward to assemble this one. I must say that these miniatures from Cursed City weren't the best ones to put together, and um, some some of them are really like kind of counterintuitive how you put them in and you almost have to put the piece in and twist it to fit it in place and you'll see that in some of the other videos that I show for some of the other heroes but this guy he was pretty straightforward and um, no problem to put together and I glued him used the clippers to cut him out really important and um, glued him together and he went together nice and easy and didn't take long at all. So Brutog is the ogre man-eater, known as the Corpse Eater, who thinks himself pretty much invincible, and to be fair, nothing has managed to kill him just yet. As a youth, in the first flush of hunger, he ate a month-old cadaver for a bet, devouring it maggots and all. It made him feel all wriggly and weird, much to the amusement of his tribe mates in the gnawing fist clan, and he nearly lost his lunch. Since that day, the mercenary ogre has trained himself to have a gut of steel and has acquired a taste for long dead flesh. He is more than happy to eat skeletons, rotten zombies, even mummified cadavers to prove it. This is just as well, for his travels have taken him to the realm's edge, and there Shyish is lousy with such revenance. Brutog has travelled the length and breadth of the Shyish innerlands, fighting in wars from Athanasia to Halost and back again in his quest to prove himself the strongest and least discerning ogre of all Shyish. The man-eater is driven by an ever-burning wanderlust, twinned with the desire to eat as many different kinds of corpses as he can find. When he heard the throne of Ulfenkarn had been claimed by a towering vampire called the Wolf King, Brutog's mouth watered in anticipation of the juicy, bloody steaks he could carve from such an undead brute. He made haste to the city, binging on the cadavers of soldiers that ringed the city's outskirts before breaking through its sally port, strangely unattended but for a pair of skeletal guards, and heading for the palace at the city's heart. Brutog has wits enough to realise he is unlikely to be able to conquer a citadel full of undead on his own and has joined forces with some thinlings that also seek Radikar's demise. He has insisted that he has the lion's share of the corpse feast afterwards and still chuckles darkly to himself that as yet no one has been brave enough to challenge his claim. So that's a great introduction to Brutog Corpse Eater and this guy I guess is the tank in this cooperative game that is Curse City. This is, um, you choose this guy if you want a kind of beast, someone strong, someone who could take some damage but also deal it out to. And here we've got his character card. And you'll see we start with this side, which is the path to glory side. And on the card, you want to see that we've got an image of the hero here. So we can match that to the miniature. Then we've also got the hero's move, vitality, defense, and agility values. And these values match up to the different shape and colored dice that you get in the game. Then we've also got this little slot here for any carried items. So we would take a little token and then that would sit on the card once it's laid flat on the table. Then we've also got areas for the armor and weapon empowerment slots. And for these empowerment slots, we have different cards that we can put in and use. And so these are for weapons and armor and they all have like different abilities. So here, on the, the weapon, the Embermatic Blast Rune, damage suffered from this hero's weapon actions cannot be reduced. And that's going to cost 10 Realmstone points. And we'll learn a lot more about these as we work through the rules videos for this game. Then at the bottom of the card, we've got the hero's Path to Glory. And for Brutog Corpse Eater, this is called Been There, Ate That. When making an inspiration roll, double the wounds value of all hostiles slain during this hero's activation. And again, we're going to learn about that as we go through the rules. So this will all start to make sense. 
but here really i want to focus on their weapons and abilities because that really is what defines the fighters and then if we start to work our way down we've got a slot here for traits and each fighter comes with a different card and they'll also have a different trait and for brutog he's a stalwart and so he's going to get this card which has all the traits that he's going to have for the different levels and as he moves up a level he can also keep the previous level so these all mount up and you see on the back of the card there's one for an executioner and i think there's four different traits all together so you have a mix with the different fighters so if you bring in four different heroes give them each a each one of them has a different trait then you get a nice mix and then they can all complement each other make up for each other's weaknesses and so you can then start to use those traits that they gain as they level up to play the game tactically and then we get the fighter's name we get the trait so we know he's a stalwart his kind of race an ogre he's a man eater and his size is large and this will have an effect as we go through the rules as well and then here we've got four squares and these are for our activation dice and so we use a regular d6 dice and then we roll four of these at the start of the turn and then they go each dice go into these slots and this is used for things like movement and attacks and we'll go through all that again in the rules and now we come to the fun bit the weapon actions and for brutog corpse eater he's got a gut gouger and he just needs to use one of the activation dice on a one plus to use that that weapon is a melee weapon he uses two of the eight sided dice to roll for that damage and the damage dealt is one to three and his second weapon action is a marrow masher so he needs a four plus now on his activation dice that's another melee weapon this time he's going to use the red dice to attack dealing a damage of two to four so those weapon actions can be used as many times as you like but he does have some unique abilities and these are limited and they're also going to come with different values so the tenderizing blow he needs a six plus with his activation dice and this weapon can only be made once per turn this hero makes a free marrow smasher four plus weapon action re-roll failed attack rolls for that action that weapon action has a damage value of three to five for that attack so the tenderizing blow really kind of improves the damage output of the Maramasha. And you'd follow the instructions and the dice that's listed up here. And then he's also got another unique ability called Shoulder Barge. And he needs a 5 plus on the activation dice for this one. And this action can only be made once per turn. This hero makes a free run. And you make a run again with a 3 plus activation dice. And then can move adjacent to hostiles without ending that action for that action they can move through hostiles but must end the action in an empty space then pick one hostile that was moved through and roll the red dice if the roll is successful that hostile is then stunned so you can see with these unique abilities it gives them um, some great things that they can do and this is really what, what's going to define the heroes along with their different traits so that's the path to glory side of brutal corpse eater but each hero can flip the card and then on the reverse this is their inspired side and you can see that on the reverse there and so we get the same thing we get the traits the names and everything exactly the same this might change so we'll see here some different dice now so the movements change vitality defense and agility so we would change which dice we can use so we would swap this one out for another red dice and then those are the dice he would use for vitality defense and agility then we also have to look out for any changes to the weapon action value and the dice used and also the damage output so all these can change you also notice that the path to glory section is gone but now we've got another unique ability and also worth reading through to see if these have changed or if they've affected any of the damage output for example but here we've got a new unique ability called invincible fortitude and after a wound or grievous wound counter is removed from this hero's character card during their activation place an activation dice with a score of one in the space it was on and again we're going to cover that in the rules so we won't worry about that too much right now but that's pretty much the layout of the cards and kind of what each section of the card means but now let's have a closer look at the traits 
for Brutog and he's the stalwart. So we'll, let's have a close look at that stalwart card. So when we start off, we're going to be at level zero. No traits there. Uh, but as you go up to level one, you're going to start getting the first trait, which is Indomitable. Before this hero would make an activation roll, they can remove one wound counter from their character card or turn a Grievous wound counter over to a wound counter. And then as each level goes up, they get extra abilities then that they can use and they can kind of these accumulate so they'll always keep level one once they reach level two so they'll have indomitable and dogged as well and so you can see these get a lot better and a lot stronger as they moved up so if we look at the the trait we get for level five i imagine this is going to be pretty powerful and this is called inviolable successful defense rolls made for this hero reduce the damage suffered by one additional point to a minimum of one so yeah he's going to be able to absorb a lot more damage now as he moves through and his traits improve so that covers brutog corpse eater and this week i'll be putting videos out for all the heroes and also the main villains too and we'll also be taking a look at things like objective markers and the kind of lesser characters like the skeletons and all those zombies we'll take a close look and see what abilities they have and what they bring to the fight I hope you were able to get the Curse City game and hopefully it'll be restocked really soon anyway. So if you haven't got it yet, I'll put a link in the description to Element Games. And when it's back in stock, you can save up to 20% there with Element Games on all your products. Uh, at the moment, they've got uh, the Curse City game for £112.50. So you're going to save 10% on the game. So a great saving. And the link will be in the description. It's an affiliate link, but it won't cost you anything extra. And I get a small commission from every sale that helps me do loads more videos like this. So thanks so much for that support. It's really brilliant and I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there. I can't wait to work through all the different heroes and villains in this series and also get started on the rules and working through everything that's included in the rule book and also the quest book. But let me know what you think about Brutog and also pop down in the comments below and let me know who your favourite hero and your favourite villain is. It'd be great to hear your feedback and thoughts. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.